Okay, let's get started. Algebra 1, Chapter 12, Section 2, we are going to look at survey results. Get off of there. Okay, survey results. So the first couple of things we're going to talk about is some, some really big words. They don't have a, a, a large depth of, of understanding that you need to under, to comprehend what the words are, but um, we're going to talk about quantitative and qualitative research. Okay, so we've got quantitative and we've got qualitative data, two different types of things that we can put into our survey. Qualitative is data that can be measured Okay, data that can be measured, and it can also be given, we're going to go ahead and say measured um, with, oh, hello, can be measured with numerical data. Let's try some, some magic here and see if this will recognize. It's not going to do it, so we are not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay, so measured with numerical data. This could be um, grades that you receive in a class. This could be uh, the number of marbles in a bag. Anything that we can assign numerical data into it. Okay, so qualitative, that takes, um, that takes a different stance. And so, just quite simply, quite simply, it can't be measured numerically. Numerically. Well, I'm a math guy. <laughs> I know that is horrible. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go numerically. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, so this could be something, maybe you fill out on a survey, your gender, male or female. That's not a number. Um, your ethnicity, uh, different things. Uh, Maybe somebody just asked you a question, yes or no, that's not a numerical answer. So that would be qualitative data. And so in our surveys, we're going to have some of both. So let's move on. And let's get an actual example. Okay, so through the power of technology, I went ahead and put some numbers in there. We're going to look at some test scores. These are just completely made up. Um, and some of the questions are going to ask, uh, what method of measures of central tendency would be best to describe these test scores? Um, so we're talking 12 test scores throughout the year. And when they're talking about measures of central tendency, remember there are three of them. There is the mean, there is the median, and there is the mode each of them having their own specific way of describing this data set. So remember that mean is just an average. And so we're going to find that here in just a second. The median is the middle term. OK, I'm just going to put middle. But remember, it's got to be the middle. And they have to be in order from least The greatest. Oop, get a little bit more T on there. There you go. And then the mode is the number that occurs the most. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the mode because it's the easiest. Um, and I look up there and I try to find a number that might occur more than once. In this case, um, there's no 89s. No repeats of 100s, no 62s, 94s. I could go through the whole list, but I'm going to tell you that in this case, there is no mode. So if I'm going to explain 
to my parents, my test scores, if I walk up to them and say, hey, there's just no mode, that pretty much explains it, that's not going to be a very good um, explanation. So we are going to strike through that, and that's not going to be an option. Let's go with red here, and let's talk about uh, our median. So let's get our terms in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to order those here real quick, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've listed out my uh, test scores in order from least to greatest, and I won't read through them to you. You can take a look at them. So now we need to find the middle term. There are 12 terms. Okay, so n equals 12. n equals 12. So there's not going to be an exact number in the middle, because if I go 6 from each end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6 from this end, okay, these are going to be my two middle terms. Okay, so in this case, since I don't have an exact middle term, some of you will remember that to find the median, I'm going to go ahead and find the mean. So I'm going to take 81 plus 89. And that's going to give me 170. And then I divide that by 2. So that's going to give me a median score of 85. Okay. So now we'll go with green on the average. And again, on the average, we're just going to add up all of those numbers and divide them by 12. OK. So when I total them all up, I get 989. I want to go ahead and divide that by 12. And that gives me um, approximately 82.4, okay, or 82 and 4 tenths. OK, so now looking at those, what's going to be my better choice of measure of central tendency to describe my scores. Um, obviously, in a score type setting, when you take all of your scores and you divide them by however many you've had, that's going to be your best bet. So in this case, our mean is our best measure of central tendency. Now, there might be some things that uh, that mean, median, and mode that none of them would work for. Maybe I'm given data that doesn't use the same numbers. Maybe it uses, for example, if you look on page 747 and you look at example 1b, if I'm looking at 1b, I notice that those numbers, eight of them are from three years ago, 15 of them are from one to three years ago, 45 of them are six months to a year ago, and 32 of them are from less than six months ago. So they weren't actually taken at the same time. And so how can I compare or average something that came from a different time frame? In this case, these test scores came from the same school year, so I can average them together. But things that come from different times, that data is not going to be able to be measured with mean, median, and mode. So there might be some times where you can't calculate those sets of values because they just don't exist from the same time period. So keep that in mind, and uh, we will get to the homework or the classwork for 12-2 in class. See you then.